Recently, I invited the people that I have the privilege of shepherding on Sunday morning. I invited them to read Romans 8, verse 11 with me, to wake up in the morning and to allow that to be what wakes them, that calls them forward into the day, into a new day. And so let me read Romans 8, 11 from the New International Version for you. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. It's a promise of hope. It is a promise of God's presence in our lives. It is a promise of the power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that actively works inside of us as we move through each and every circumstance, each and every moment of our days. And so it's a good practice. Sometimes we need fewer words from Rick or from someone else, from a friend on social media, and we need more words just from the very voice, the very heartbeat of God. And so, so the invitation was to read this, to memorize this, to recite this. Let me read it again, this time from the New Living Translation, Romans 8, 11. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living in you. There are some simple steps that we take as we move through our days. One is trust Jesus. Literally, trust Jesus, the one who offers forgiveness, the one who offers hope, the one who has defeated death through the open grave, the empty tomb, the one who is making this promise to us now through God the Father, saying that that same power that raised him resides in us. Sometimes we need to then just live as if we are followers of Jesus. We need to live into that. We need to practice that. We need to live with the assurance and the stride and the walk of all of those things that God has given to us, the hope, the promise, the faithfulness, the assurances, and we need to practice those in our footsteps, in those things that we hold fast to. We need to recite them. We need, we need to remember them amidst the confusion and the chaos. And we need to fix our gaze upon these words, upon this hope, more than we fix our gaze upon our news sources, uh, whatever they might be, our social media friends, whoever they might be, that we need to hear more from the assurances of the reality and the truth of what God has put forward. So let me read this verse again to you, again, this time from the easy-to-read version, Romans 8, 11. God raised Jesus from death, and if God's Spirit lives in you, he will also give life to your bodies that die. Yes, God is the one who raised Christ from death, and he will raise you to life through his Spirit living in you. There's hope in this. There's assurance in this. There is the wisdom and the power to move into today knowing that whatever is in front of us is going to be met by the power of God who is within us. Listen again, this time from Eugene Peterson's version in the translation called The Message. But if God himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the Spirit of Christ, won't know what you're talking about. But for you who welcome him, in whom he dwells, even though you still experience all of the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ's. Trust Jesus. Live as a follower of Jesus. And then invite people into practicing what you're practicing, which is why I'm inviting all of you 
to remember, to recite, to hold fast to Romans 8.11. It's what I'm practicing as we move through these days in the hope of a God who not only knows us, but indwells us. God bless you, and we'll chat next week.